Hello and welcome again to Latina Voices Smart Talk. I'm Minerva Perez with my co-host Sofia Drogué and Patricia Gras. Today we talk to the first family of Taekwondo, the Lopez family from Sugarland, Texas. The Lopez family made history by being the first family in over a century, a triad of people to go forward to the Olympics and come away with once again a triad, three medals. We're thrilled about this. And we're very excited to have them here with us to tell us about their journey to Beijing and how they made the martial sports of Taekwondo their passion. But right now, ladies, it's time for Let's Talk. So let's talk. There's a lot to talk about. I know it's been a couple of months, but I still want to share about the blessings of Ike because I think a lot of things happened. For instance, people for the first time met their neighbors, which is amazing. True. They hadn't met their neighbors in True. years. They were eating together, they were, their kids were playing outside together. I think that was one of the blessings. It was a real community spirit. And do you know that I had my first Ramadan dinner because of Hurricane Ike? Amazing. Night? I went to a family's home where they had power. We didn't have power. My little girl was friends with their little girl. She wanted to go someplace to play video games, right? <laughs> Smart kid. So when we went to pick her up, the, they, they had fasted all day for Ramadan, and then they were having their big meal, which they can do after sundown. And so the lady asked me to please partake. And my husband said, oh, no, 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 no. And I said, polite. are you crazy? <laughs> we didn't have power, and we didn't have a lot of food either. So I had the most, <laughs> I had the most wonderful <laughs> spiritual Ramadan dinner. It was wonderful. It That's reminds right. me very much of the famous saying, it's the worst of times, the best of times. Yeah, right, Obviously, right. for many, the worst of times, the billions of dollars, the devastation, emotional, yes, physical, and monetary. Yes. But it also reminds me of the best of times. Now, I did not have that luxury of such a great dinner. <laughs> I had a great moment, though, after 10 days without power. I met my neighbor across the street because she watched me run after what I thought was the truck to give me power. Reliant truck. Unfortunately, it was the truck that was trying to take away our trees that were, of course, down. But we had a good laugh and shared a good moment and made a friend. You, and you met, you met the neighbors. Yeah. Right. I mean, and that's time. the key. And another thing that I keep, kept hearing was a lot of people rekindled their marriage. One, because they didn't have TV, so they had to communicate. <laughs> and they had candlelight. <laughs> Romantic. Yeah, you know, so a lot of people started talking to each other. I mean, it really changed the, the dynamics mm -hmm. in the home. Yeah. When you don't have TV, when you don't have electricity, you have to, then you learn to grill, too, right outside. You go outside and you huh? grill all your And you save money on electricity and gas because, you know, at the beginning of this, we didn't have any gas. You know, and, and this is not to undermine the people that are suffering to this day. You know, they're rebuilding their homes and they lost everything. But, you know, we have our lives. And I keep saying you can replace anything, anything. but your sure. life. You know, it had been 25 years since this region of the United States had gotten such a bad storm. I mean, we went through Katrina and Rita by way of, of Louisiana, we helped them, and we didn't get uh, Rita coming through South Texas. It went uh, east. But you know what? It really taught us a lot of right. what it to really do did. and it what really not did. to do. Well, I think what it does, it gives hope. It gives hope for any other uh, section of the nation that may experience it. It's difficult, mm -hmm. absolutely devastating for some, but what transpires not only in the family, the home, even in the professions. I had someone say to me, I have had a deadline. He said, no, hurricanes, that's the exception to every rule. Yes. People were willing to make exceptions and understand this was a tragedy, there was devastation, we had to come together. And a tragedy that will be uh, around for a while because right. there are a lot of people who lost everything. Well, I mean, and we've learned that many counties were affected, not just Galveston. Chambers County counties. lost Oak Island and Smith Point. Uh, Liberty County suffered great damage. And I, I think that County. we, in a way, we all came together in a way that we've never come together. Of course, this was the third wor worst storm mm -hmm. in our history mm -hmm. and uh, very, very powerful storm, very large storm. It was unusually large. I'll tell you what, I went through Beulah when I was a kid years and years ago, but this scared me. This really scared me. Well, we, we've talked and we're going to be talking some more because we are going to be talking to the Lopez family. The guys are here. Diana couldn't make it, but they've got a story to tell. We talked to them earlier, so we'll be back with their story. And welcome back to Latina Voices. Today, our newsmaker, the family from Texas that took the 2008 Beijing Olympics by storm. We're talking about the first family of Taekwondo, the Lopez family from Sugarland. And although two of them couldn't be here, we have the best right here. We've got Mark Lopez and Steven Lopez, and we are so pleased to have you here on Latina Voices. Thank you. And how did, how did it happen? I mean, you guys made history, and uh, you wowed everybody. You went with a mission and you accomplished it. Mark, let's start with you. Exactly. Um, this has been a dream of ours for 
eight years now. Um, we tried in 2000. Uh, it didn't happen. Stephen represented the family and won a gold medal. 2004, we tried again. Diana got really close to joining Stephen on the Olympic team. But again, Stephen lifted up the whole family and won a gold medal again. 2008, we all did it. You know, thanks to my brother Gene and my brother Stephen, you know, mentoring us. Diana and I joined Stephen this time, and we all made it together. And uh, a dream come true. And in the process, you made history as a family. Sure it was. You know, it's uh, it's almost so difficult to to really grasp what we did. You know, as a family, it's difficult enough for some families to even get together and eat dinner together. And uh, and we made the Olympic team together. And it's history and. It was just a, a marvel to be able to go into the opening ceremonies alongside my brothers and my sister and just to experience that. And it's, those are memories and experiences that we'll have for the rest of our lives. And isn't it true that your mother went for the first time? Your it's, parents got it, to go for the first time? That's exactly right. My mom, she's a, a nervous wreck anytime she sees us compete, and especially being a full contact sport. You can only imagine. I, I know how I feel when I see my, my siblings compete. I'm a nervous wreck as well. So. Sure. Uh, but yeah, this is the first time that she got to come to the Olympic Games, actually travel and uh, see her children competing. So it was that much more special for us. And your sister uh, went out really for the first time for the Olympics and bronzed. Oh, it, Diana, you know, like was I said, I, I don't know how my parents must feel, but I was so incredibly happy uh, and, and happy to see Mark and Diana. They competed the day before I did. And just to see them and, and to be seeing them competing on on such a level at the Olympic Games and to be on the podium, I was like, wow! I was uh, the proudest brother, you know, I can possible imagine. that day. And your father as well. Uh, we know about him and what he did and the sacrifices that both your parents made to even get you started in Taekwondo. Why don't you give us a little history about the, how you started? I I, I know the history about the washing machine right. or the dryer right. keeping you warm when you were practicing. But tell us what started it all. For sure. You. My father has always been a fan of martial arts, and he noticed there was a Taekwondo school around the corner, so he thought it would be a good idea to put my oldest brother, Gene, into it. He knew it was going to give him good quality, uh, you know, characteristics for, sure. for his life growing up. But um, after Gene did it, Stephen followed, I followed, Diana followed, and uh, soon enough, it started being a family thing. Gene decided that the Taekwondo school that we were training at wasn't good enough for us, and uh, wasn't good enough, good enough for us to get us to the next level. Yeah. So. He branched off, created his own little gym in our garage, which was a regular garage with oil stains on the floor, holes in the wall, and uh, you know he started the dream team right there in our garage. And tell me about the dryer, which your, your mother oh, turned on the dryer. Yeah. Um, in the cold days. Yeah, during the summertime, it got really hot, so my little sister would bring out iced tea with ice or water. You know, this is before she started training, and then winter time. You know, it could, for us, it gets cold in yeah. Houston. 30 degrees might not be cold for the north, but down here it's pretty, pretty darn cold. So uh, my mom would time when she would do the laundry and, uh, you know, we'll put the dryer on to, to warm up the garage and prep us for a good workout. I, I love that story because it, 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 humble beginnings. It's, it's humble beginnings. You're an immigrant family, Nicaraguan, and, and you have really achieved the American dream. It, it really, we really have, and, you know, my, my parents, you know, a lot of people always ask, so who, who you look up to, who, who are your idols, your heroes, and I don't really have to look too far. You know, my mother, my father, coming from, you know, a very poor country of Nicaragua, moving to New York, not knowing the language, and, and my father, you know, making it happen for us. You know, every family, I think, comes here to America for the American dream, and, and I think my father has achieved that, and uh, that's what makes, makes me most proud is that I'm out there. We made the Olympic team, we made Olympic history, and, and we're doing it, of course, for the family, you know, for God, first of all, but if, and most of all for my parents, and that's what motivates me and pushes me to go out there and just be the best that I can be. And you're just walking around on cloud nine still. Yep, yep, uh, loving life, uh, thanking God for, you know, I'm, I'm healthy and, uh, and happy, and um, just happy that our dream came true as a family. Are you going back to London? Of course. You know, uh, you know, winning gold in 2000, winning gold in 2004. Of course, my eyes were set. The expectations would go out there and win another gold medal. That being said, um, I have to go back in 2000. So not have to, I want to. And what we experienced as a family, you know, I know I want to experience it again. Um, but let me tell you, this one, I won a bronze medal. But by far, you know, the two gold medals, I would put them away. And I'd much rather all of us win a medal than just me win my only third gold medal. So it was, it was well worth it. Excellent. All right.